our toilet decided that it didn't want to not be part of the renovation so even though we had no plans on changing it it decided that it wasn't going to flush last night the flushing thing was not working so we're here now last second and searching. Elisa's just told me that there's toilet science which I had never <laughs> even thought of like how tall the toilet is? Do I want to squat or do I want to just sit comfortably? Do you want a handheld bidet? Yeah, do you want a handheld <laughs> bidet? I don't know if I want a handheld bidet. We're just looking at like how many liters, how tall is it going to be? We figure we're going to go with a taller toilet as recommended by some of our YouTube family and yesterday's comments because the kids aren't little. So I think we're going to go for this one here as it's on sale and it's an 18 inch height. <laughs> Six liter. Or, yeah, six, six liter, liter two, two piece, piece, all in one package. Yeah. And luckily it's on sale because we are already now going over budget on day two of the bathroom renovation. You <laughs> need a good pooper. <laughs> I like the light choice he gave us. When we were at the hardware store, the gentleman that was there saw that we were staring blindly at an entire row of light bulbs, which made no sense and was like in a different language to us. And we were looking. Just light bulbs. Just light bulbs because. We were apparently 40 years old when we realized that there was a difference between regular light bulbs and LED light bulbs that are for dimming and yeah. things like that. And if you use light bulbs that are not, whoa, that was so much brighter. Yeah, if, I like it. If you use light bulbs that are not for dimmer Dim. light fixtures, yeah. you can cause yeah, electrical shock. <laughs> the LED light bulbs literally look the same, but when these are the ones that were in, and they didn't dim at all. And then these ones, this is, I haven't tried it yet. So we're testing theory, it out. They should do. Yay, we did it. Or you did it. I got to do me yeah, in there. No. <laughs> and we actually got the LED dimmers too, to replace these. Whatever those. Archaic. Archaic. Broken. Yeah. We're actually working super late right now at night. We started cleaning the shower to get ready for doing the shower restore and got a little oh. carried away. Yeah, it's the box. He said that would happen. We had a bunch of comments that this was not the light fixture that should go with this medallion and that it's too small and that it's not antique enough. A couple of reasons, don't want a chandelier. And you'll see why I don't want a chandelier here. It's hanging because there's going to be something over there that's going to hang from the ceiling above the window. And I also don't really like chandeliers, not really my style. Right. And as I mentioned in a previous video, we live hours from any thrift shops or antique stores. And since so we're trying to do this bathroom on a budget, I knew that something that was antique at an actual antique shop would be far too expensive. And because our thrift stores here are so far away and so hit and miss, I knew we weren't going to find something, you know, right now when we needed it. So this is my option right now, a $30 light fixture. That's going to suffice with the idea that I have for this room and the look for now, and we can upgrade to a larger size light fixture later. Yeah, I think you're right about the box not being right. Okay, so I've made a huge mess on the floor here, but I just took out along the actual floor here, there is a piece of this quarter round trim, or there was. And I noticed when I was trying to clean and get ready for doing taping to prep for the restore, that quite a few of the pieces of this wood look like this, which tells me that because water at some point from previous owners was coming out from the shower and going on this wood, well, what does wood do? It molds and we don't want mold there. And we don't need a wood trim piece to go along the wall here like that, because when we do put the flooring in, we are going to be taking that wood off anyways, and we'll be able to do a nice bead of white silicone or something all the way around to close off the seam between the floor that will butt right up to the floor pan of the shower here. So if you remember, we were living here for two years and we were not using the stand-up shower, but we were using the clawfoot tub that really needs to be restored. And we're gonna get to that as part of this renovation in this room. We have everything we need to be able to restore that and make this amazing original tub beautiful still rather than replacing the tub and keep the original integrity of that tub in the house here. I think it's definitely something that has to stay and I think many of you agree. But this stand-up shower was definitely not from the late 1800s. <laughs> 1899, they didn't have these and it is not really our style. We really don't like it that much but we're going to try to transform this and make it look more us and fit the vibe we're going for in the bathroom. Previous owners have a lot of grime on this glass so that needs to get completely rectified and the tile, although it doesn't look damaged in any way, is not the color we're going for with the dark brown. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I start restoring this is make sure that all of the soap scum is off of this because when you're painting something, 
that is you know metal or tile or something like that you want to make sure that you do all the prep work because the prep work you do is going to give you all the success when you put the paints and stuff on if you don't do the prep work it's definitely not going to last so i usually use natural cleaning products but i'm going to use this scrubbing bubbles because we need to make sure that this is properly prepped before i can make it look better <laughs> i never i don't buy like this kind of cleaning product normally so but we need to make sure that there's no scum on this so that when we paint the tile and we paint the metals and stuff, it's all going to properly adhere to the surface. I'm probably using more than I need to, but let's make sure it's really clean before we can hear it like it's activating. activating. Can you hear it? Sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this side and then I'm going to close it and let it all soak in for a bit. And then I'm going to come scrub it. I'm just gonna use Windex for the outside because it shouldn't have soap scum on the outside, right? No, you should on the doors and the. Because you're gonna paint it, the, yeah. How am I gonna get it all off? I don't know, paper towel. Okay, so you know that I don't really like chrome, and so I'm gonna show you a few inspirations that I saw online that I thought would be kind of what my shower install could look like potentially if I take the time to chrome delete and then if I take the time to paint the tile. And we're not going to take this all down break out that tile and replace the tile. Maybe one day we'll do that, but for right now we want to do this on a budget, so we're going to paint the tiles, prep them and paint them, and then we're going to use my metallic gold on all of the chrome, and hopefully my shower saw looks like the examples that I just showed you. Now that I've taken some time to get everything taped off, everything's been prepped as perfect as I possibly can, and I used an entire roll of painter's tape to be able to make sure that all the chrome areas were detailed exactly the way that they are. So now I'm going to use some Zinsser Bin 123 Primer. This is for all surfaces, and we're going to prime all of the chrome spots. Once I do the primer, I know this is going to help my metallic gold stay on this surface that's going to get wet and cleaned often. So we're going to shake this up and start whiting out with the primer all over. It's very spitty. This is the first time that I have used the Zinser in a spray can and I found it really watery and it was splattering everywhere. So normally when I use my gold spray paint, I don't really have to do that close of taping off. So like all of my other DIY projects, you know that I love my metallic gold and that is what I'm going to use on top of the primer. This is the first time that I've done the primer underneath and I was doing a lot of research online trying to figure out what my best option to make this really durable for a shower space. And I said, use the Zinsser Primer, then the Metallic Gold, and then a satin or a matte clear coat. Rustolia makes a clear coat that I'm gonna show you in my next stage of this that I'll then spray once I have this cured onto on the front. So I'm just going around to all the spots I taped off. I'm not too worried if I get overspray because a really small little razor blade or something just takes it right off the glass. And if I do get any mist on the tiles, that's okay. I'm gonna prime them and paint them in just a short time. Appalachian sunrise paints my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow on golden, 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 golden things. Okay, now that my spray paint is dry, I'm going to use my Rust Oleum Matte Clear Coat and it should protect this for a lot better durability. Wet peel. I'm going to try to wet peel it so that it doesn't get burning. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it. Mm -hmm. Wet. 
I feel like Black Billy is going to be the best option. I agree. Okay, this is the progress that I'm at right now. It is now nighttime, so it looks a little bit dark and dingy in here, but we're working on having the light fixture, but I had to turn the overhead light off so it didn't look orange in here right now. But you can see that I chrome deleted all of that chrome. So I now have everything with a metallic gold and I absolutely love it. And now I'm at the part where I'm trimming off all of the white paint that's going to go on the back. And I'm using a different paint that I have never used before, which I completely destroyed this can. But I'm using this Cisco 360, and it says, that would be the French side, I do not read that side. It's extremely durable and it's a soft finish. And this is supposed to fast dry, which is, it's literally drying while I'm painting it. So I trimmed everything out. I have not used this before, so I'm going by the recommendation of the lady at the hardware store. First coat, I immediately touched it after about five minutes it was dry and I was like, oh, this is like hard sealed already to this tile and there's no scraping it off. So I took the scraper and I tried and it wouldn't even come off and that was just what I call like my prime coat. I'm now going to, now that I trimmed everything off with a paintbrush, going to roll my first coat over everything. I think this is gonna be amazing. And so far, I'm thinking it's gonna be as durable as I hope it's gonna be. I know it's gonna be a couple of coats because I wanna make sure it's like really, really solid. Goodbye, Brown. Goodbye, Brown. I was just gonna say, it's always fun to try a new painting product because you know I do so much painting. And so to try not only a completely different brand that I've never used, but a different kind of paint to kind of paint over this tile and see how this is gonna go and how durable it will actually be is kind of exciting for me to see over the next couple months, like how does this really hold up? Because we've painted tile in the past, like years and years ago that probably wasn't the right paint and it stayed for a pretty long time and then it started to peel. And then we used some enamel paint when we did the camper and that really was really good, but very plasticky feeling and didn't feel like a nice kind of like tile finish. And I knew right away from this first coat, like a kind of a satin finish on it, that it felt so hard and it didn't feel like it was ever going to be able to come off. So I guess we'll see. Time will tell. But I'll update you guys in, you know, however many months and see how it's going to kind of turn out for us. And worst case scenario, eventually one day we might want to add new tiles back here anyway. So if it doesn't last, it's not the end of the world. It's just Well, a like, I mean, if we were going to replace these tiles, we would use white tiles anyway. So why... Let's save ourselves a few hundred dollars right now and let's paint these tiles. I bought new caulking and everything to be able to seal this all back up really nice. And I was at the hardware store. I didn't tape off the gold, I just edged it with my brush because I know that I can just do that freehand myself. But if you were happy to tape it off, then I would say definitely leave the spray paint overnight before you do that. Okay, so in my evening light, this is where I'm at. One full coat, we're gonna let this dry overnight before we do any more. Or maybe I might quickly put one more on like really late tonight at like midnight or something. But I think that it's gonna look pretty close to my inspiration photos I showed you earlier in this video. What do you think? Get the rest of this sort of prepped up and ready to finish this tomorrow. And we will see you on tomorrow's episode.